Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is December 2nd, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight. You are vindicated. This has got to be the 50th time the last six months on the radical Muslims celebrating, not just in New Jersey, but New York, Palestine, all over. What do you have to say? They're still attacking you. People wanted me to apologize, and uh, we can't do that. People like you and I can't do that so easily. Now, we can do it if we're wrong, Alex. You apologize. I'd apologize if I was wrong. But they were celebrating, and they were celebrating the fall of the World Trade Center. I think that's disgraceful. Highlights from Donald Trump on the Alex Jones Show. Then, Obama says Muslims join ISIS because they don't have any job opportunities. Plus, the evidence is in. Russian satellite and aerial reconnaissance show convoys moving from Syria into Turkey. To Turkey? All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented superfiltration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 we begin our broadcast with some very serious news out of San Bernardino, California, where we have reports of multiple people being shot. Uh, as we record this at 6.07 Central Standard Time here in Austin, reports are that one per person is in custody. These are the shooters. Two are dead, and maybe one is hiding inside of a nearby church. Of course, with these uh, active shooter situations, it's a very fluid situation. Numbers change all the time, the number of victims, the number of suspects. Uh, so they continue to update this, and we'll bring you the uh, newest information as it becomes available. A little bit about the shooting situation. Uh, it was happening at a Christmas party or a facility where a Christmas party was taking place for Teamsters. And they say uh, the department SWAT team was training nearby. And uh, as we have a report coming up later in our broadcast that details how they reported on Fox News that they have training situations there that go on pretty regularly, pretty much every month. Uh, they have some type of training situation. One of the witnesses was quoted as saying, oh, it's just another training situation that you realize this was something that was going on for real. As of right now, they're reporting that the uh, assailants were carrying AK-47 type weapons and they were telling people to be on the lookout for the trio, but now it seems like they have uh, caught the guys. At first, they were saying it was between one and three possible shooters, and now I guess uh, potentially four with the information I just gave you a little bit ago. But as I said, we will continue to update you on that information as it becomes available. Now, earlier today on the Alex Jones Show, Donald Trump paid us a visit. Uh, he called in from his, uh, I guess, Trump Tower in New York, and he was telling us about his pretty much his campaign for the next year. And regardless of what you think about Trump, I thought this was a really good interview, and they actually stuck to the facts. We'll detail this more coming up in our later segments. We'll have a, a segment of that that you can watch and see for yourself coming up later on in our broadcast. Now, let's talk, take a look at the Russia situation. Russia presents evidence of Turkish support for the Islamic State. Now, this is backing up claims that they made earlier this week. Uh, Vladimir Putin, who I'm not vouching for any way, shape, or form, but he's saying, hey, we believe that these guys are supporting the IS, and they presented the uh, aerial surveillance to document that fact. The Russians claim Islamic groups continue to receive significant funding, as well as weapons, ammunition, and other material nourishment for their activities. A large number of states, especially Turkey, are involved in funding terrorist activities. The Russian Federation's Deputy Minister of Defense said illegal oil revenue is the primary source of their funding, and they have irrefutable evidence presented, including space and aerial reconnaissance data, according to the Russians. So you can go to Kurt Nimmo's article and find out all that information on what's going on with the situation in Russia. Now, as we've been talking about for the past several weeks, uh, 
The situation about what we're going to do with Syrian refugees, are they going to come here, are they going to go other places? And we're going to talk to Syrian girl about that coming up in our later segments. But right now, we have ISIS, they're coming out and bragging that they're taking advantage of the uh, migrant crisis to bring in sleeper sales to various countries. And no duh, of course you're going to sneak in with all the good people. And as we always say, I'm sure there are plenty of good people out there, but you also have bad people mixed in. So if you're gonna bring people into your country, you need to have some type of vetting process. If you go to a movie theater, they check your ticket because they don't expect you to be there on the honor system. It shouldn't be any different when you're entering a country, especially a foreign country. A newly uncovered 99-page manifesto produced by the Islamic State brags about how the terror organization has exploited the refugee program to send jihadis sleeper cells to Europe since 2012 with the goal of creating Muslim no-go zones in Western cities that can be used as a base from which to launch further Paris-style attack. Now, a few weeks ago, I guess it was last week, the guys went out to Paris after the horrific shooting that happened there, and they were documenting these Muslim no-go zones. You know, basically, you had Joe Biggs, Paul Joseph Watson, and one of our uh, camera guys, Michael, uh, two tall white guys and another white guy with all these tattoos on them. They pretty much stuck out in these areas, and they said they were being followed, people were being very rude to them, all types of different shenanigans going on. So actually, Biggs is out there in the streets right now going to various places, trying to document these uh, type of areas here in the United States. We'll have a special report from him coming up a little bit later in our episode. Now, as we talk about the Islamic State and any type of terrorist organization, I've heard some whoppers in my day as to why people do things like this. And now it's becoming a repeated talking point. Uh, now it's coming from Bill Nye the Science Guy that people are flocking to the Islamic State because of climate change. Yes, this whole thing in Paris, uh, referring to the UN Council there and how they have to tackle climate change, they're saying that people are becoming terrorists because of climate change. Now let's take a look at this clip from Bill Nye, then I'll give you my thoughts and analysis. It's very reasonable that the recent trouble in Paris is a result of climate change. Um, small and medium farmers have abandoned their farms because there's not enough water, not enough rainfall. Young people have gone to the big cities looking for work. There's not enough work for everybody. So the disaffected youth, as we say, the young people who don't believe in the system, believe the system's failed, are, are more easily engaged and more easily recruited by terrorist organizations. And it seems like just the other day I did a report on how college kids and high school kids are leaving their families' stable homes to go overseas and join ISIS. That has nothing to do with climate change or anything of the sort. Bill Nye, the science guy. And as a kid, I love Bill Nye, the science guy. We used to watch him all the time in school. But when I hear him say stuff like he did earlier this year, talking about how climate change is to blame for uh, tornadoes and flooding in Oklahoma, there have always been tornadoes and flooding in Oklahoma. It has nothing to do with climate change. And I'm not a climate change denier. I understand that there are things happening with the weather and the climate in general. My position is putting out carbon taxes isn't going to do anything to stop it. Paying your carbon taxes to these uh, uh, organizations and these groups that are run by guys like Al Gore, where they sit on the boards. You ever wonder why Al Gore is out there pushing global warming so hard? Because he's going to make money off it as soon as they make carbon taxes a law. That's why I don't trust these guys. They're like modern day witch doctors. They say, hey, give me the money and I'll go out here and dance around and make it rain or I'll make it stop raining or I'll dry it out or whatever it is they want to do at that particular time. These guys have no, con well, I should say they have no control of the weather. We all know about things like cloud seeding and all that, but they don't have as much control over the weather as they want you to believe. They think if you pay them these carbon taxes magically on its own without any other assistance, the world is just going to become a better place. Nothing can be further than the truth from the truth. Now let's talk about a similar comment. We heard what Bill Nye was saying there. Earlier this year, the Obama administration came out and said Muslims are joining groups like ISIS because of lack of job opportunities. But we cannot win this war by killing them. We cannot kill our way out of this war. We need in the longer term, medium and longer term, to go after the root causes that leads people to join these groups, whether it's lack of opportunity for jobs. We're not going to be able to stop that in our lifetime or 50 lifetimes. There's always going to be poor people. There's always going to be poor Muslims. And as long as there are poor Muslims, the trumpets blow and they'll join. I disagree with that. I think people are joining groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda because they're being trained by the CIA. I think they're joining ISIS because people keep airdropping them grenades. That's why they're joining these terrorist organizations. They're pretty much wind-up toys, especially Al-Qaeda. You have groups uh, that are going, going from country to country. They're in Iraq, they're going to Libya, 
And now in Syria, most of the Syrian rebels, or as they're called, aren't even really Syrian. They're just uh, jihadis. They move from place to place. They continue to fund them, give them everything that they need, and then they just go tear up a, uh, or in a land. It's basically like having a walking bomb, you know, because a bomb isn't a precision weapon. You get a lot of collateral damage. So they just give these guys uh, AK-47s, grenades, and all that. They say, hey, go in here, oust this particular dictator or ruler or whoever they want to uh, get out of the area, and then they come pick up the pieces afterwards. That's basically what al-Qaeda is. But, uh, yeah, they want to tell you these guys are joining these terrorist organizations because of lack of job opportunities. No, they're pretty much being employed by the CIA to begin with, especially al-Qaeda. Now, let's talk about uh, some domestic issues here. We know Black Lives Matter. And as I always talk about Black Lives Matter, there are plenty of good people in there. It's a grassroots organization that's just been co-opted by various people with uh, various interests. But now we see a Black Lives Matter supporter who threatened to kill people at his school is now allowed back on campus. This is probably one of the most ridiculous stories of the day. Uh, 21-year-old Jabari Dean was arrested Monday after threatening to kill students and staff at the University of Chicago. Dean posted a message on social media over Thanksgiving weekend in which he laid out details in his plan to carry out a racially motivated rampage. This is my only warning, Dean wrote. And now he's being allowed back on campus. It's completely ridiculous, especially to all these people who always want to talk about school shootings. Why would you let this guy back on campus? It's, I, it's completely boggles my mind why they would participate in such an action. This guy needs to be banned from campus uh, flat out. But uh, I guess it's just too politically correct to do that in this day and age. Now, a final story before we go on to Joe Biggs and his special report. I was speechless. Man charged with felony for passing out jury rights flyers in front of a courthouse. She told me the bond. I, I, again, I was speechless. $150,000 bond for handing out a piece of paper on a public sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And speechless. Speechless after charging $15,000 on a credit card to post bond. Keith Wood says all he was doing was passing out this flyer on jury rights, standing on this sidewalk outside the Macosta County Courthouse. There's so much good information in here. And as the article points out, the man was charged with a felony for obstruction of justice and a misdemeanor for tampering with a jury. Now, handing out a pocket constitution or some type of flyer is not obstruction of justice. I remember those old Alex Jones videos. You guys can find them on Mike Hansen's archive on YouTube. And uh, these guys would go out and hand out people, uh, you know, like pocket constitutions, and they want to arrest them. And the cops freak out, like, oh, what is this? Are you threatening me to hand me this pocket constitution? Like, no, it's the Constitution of the United States, something that you swore an oath to. Why are you freaking out and trying to arrest me? when I hand one of these things to you. And it's the same thing with this. Being an informed juror is not tampering with the jury in any way, shape, or form. But that's the point where we are in this country. We're having any type of education and trying to grow more in the laws of your land are considered uh, enemy combatant status. So hopefully this guy will beat the wrath and beat the riot. It's a completely ridiculous charge. And I hope he does make those guys pay for it. Now, as I said earlier, we go to Joe Biggs, who is documenting the American Caliphate. Joe, there was a report, and I, I mentioned it earlier in the broadcast, about Paris police telling Jews not to light Hanukkah candles in public spaces. There was a tweet uh, that was sent out that said, Paris police order us to cancel most of our public Hanukkah uh, candle lighting in the city in light of terror attacks and fear of additional attacks. Efforts are underway to approve a candle lighting at the foot of the Eiffel Tower. Joe, that's an admission that they've lost control in Paris, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the moment you stop doing the normal things that you would normally do, practicing your religion, day-to-day -day activities, that's when the terrorists win. That's what they want. Yes. They want to disrupt your day-to-day -day life. And the fact that the French government's going to come out and do this, the fact that they extended this whole martial law state for three months, not allowing people to congregate, not allowing people to to be outside like that in large numbers, you know, giving the police the ability to go door to door without a warrant. You know, today in France, they just closed down three mosques, you know, so there's a lot of stuff going on and it's people think it's happening over there, but it's I got a very good chance of happening here in the States. You know, the way that Molenbeek and Belgium has been completely taken over and it is essentially the jihad capital of the world. That kind of stuff can happen here.